What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to another pay-per-view point edition of the Smart Guy Moment Smack Talk Podcast. We're getting things a little bit done early here because we are jumping ahead to what is going to happen next week with NXT Stand and Deliver 2022. That is happening on WrestleMania weekend, specifically WrestleMania Saturday. I hate that I use the term WrestleMania Saturday, but that's what they're doing. It's going to take place in the afternoon. And since next week is going to be just completely shock full of all these different things we need to take care of, I figured we'd get this out of the way. We know most of the card. We're just missing one person, but we know it's going to be one of these three potential people. So why not break down what is potentially going to happen there with our predictions, uh, what we're excited about, and everything else that we normally do here on the preview. Who are we? I'm your host as always, Tony Mango. Joining me as always are Callum Wiggins. We couldn't stand waiting, so we delivered this early. Such is true. (laughs) And Robert D. Felice. Oh, we are as close as it gets to being excited for this show without maybe actually being excited. I'm I'm kind of excited. Uh, I think that this is a good looking card. It's uh, you got a lot of names thrown in here. It's not the best card that I've seen from an NXT show. It's not something that, of course, is making me feel like, oh, my God, this NXT 2.0 experiments really working or anything. If anything, I, I feel like it's still just sort of kind of blah. But, I mean, you know, all things considered, this is going to be most likely a pretty good show. And uh, we got six matches to break down here. So we're going to go through this one by one. While we do, tell us what your thoughts are. Leave a comment, especially on YouTube. And if you are there, hit the like button. That'll help us out quite a bit. Double check that you are subscribed to the channel. If you're not, subscribe. Ring that little notification bell to know when we go live for different things, including the post shows that we do for these, because we'll do one for... All three of these shows, <laughs> that's going to be a busy, busy weekend. I'm still considering uh, whether or not to do some kind of a live Hall of Fame watch along or something. Either Hall of Fame or NXT. I'll be around for it so we could. Yeah, it's kind of uh, plans up in the air a little bit right now, but more than likely, I would assume probably something based off of the Hall of Fame. And then we've got NXT, then we got the two WrestleMania nights, so... Lots of things to be aware of when the alerts go for the emails to let you know that, uh, you know, they actually are live right now. They're broadcasting. You can jump into the chats and everything. And also, if you're clicking around on some of those buttons on YouTube and, you know, you've already bypassed like the share button and then you did the like button or anything like that, take advantage of the little join button that gives you access to the pick your poison tier and the dark casts and other kind of things for you to uh, help support us out of the monetary stuff. It's the same exact thing as the Patreon. So, you know, if you are more interested on the YouTube members platform than if you uh, want to do that or, or Patreon, same kind of deal. It's also that little thanks button, just a little tip jar. And uh, I don't know, we'll talk about some other stuff on the plug side of things a little bit later on. We'll pepper that in, but let's get into this card here with, uh, we normally go with the whole, like, Oh, what other matches are they going to add? They're not, <laughs> it's got six matches. They normally do five. So there are, are no matches. I would assume are going to be added to this card. If anything, it would be something based off of like a uh, mixed tag team match of Dexter Loomis and Indy Hartwell against Persia Perota and Duke Hudson. But I'm assuming that's more of an NXT TV show kind of deal. Because instead, we have Gunther versus LA Knight, which was added last night. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of excited for it to a certain extent. I like Gunther. I like LA Knight. I haven't seen them wrestle each other. Sure, why not? Strong win for Gunther. Yeah, Uh, it's hard not to be excited for a Walter match. And, (laughs) yeah, I'm not going to call him that. And so, yeah, I think that it should be fun. LA Knight's not the most dynamic performer, so I I don't really care too much for that side of things. But I could see Walter chop the shit out of him, and that'll be fun. He chopped Duke Hudson last night, and I, I... I felt for the man because it really just feels like that must hurt a lot. And I'm looking forward to that because I thought that they would hot shot him to Braun Breaker. And that Braun Breaker, uh, Walter, would be the main event of NXT uh, TakeOver Stand and Deliver. This is before he became Gunther and they stopped doing TakeOvers. But Even though the website still says TakeOver. <laughs> Like, I think that this match should be fun, but 
It's got to be Walter or Gunther over Strong, and he's got to go on for the world title. Yeah, I I mean, not to spoil what I think the main event's going to be, but I fully agree. I think that Braun Breaker versus Gunther is something that's going to be happening relatively soon. I don't know exactly when, but, you know, I mean, we've got TV specials that they could be doing post-Mania. We've got the potential of another pay-per-view event that they could do. I don't think it would drag out all the way until Great American Bash, but, I mean, there's In Your House, I think, would be the next one, right? It's usually I believe somewhere so. post-Mania. So I can see In Your House being Braun Breaker versus Gunther, and even if that's not the case, I still think that Gunther is the bigger priority here over LA Knight, who could very easily go up to the main roster after uh, after Mania. But he can go up with a loss. He doesn't need to win. Gunther is someone who has beaten every single person he's been in the ring with except two people, right? I'm trying to think about who who's beaten them. Dragonoff did. Well, Dragonoff did, but he's also beaten Dragonoff, and he's uh, he lost and, uh, in the he, Survivor he Series, in the match. series match. Oh, that's right, he lost to Drew in the Survivor in a minute, series. Yeah, in a minute and a half, yeah. And then I'm sure that he's lost like six man tags and stuff, but yeah, you know, that doesn't really matter. Like actually taking the fall, right? So I mean, he is somebody who's pretty damn well protected, and I see no reason why LA Knight should win this match. It should be fun. It's filler, you know. Just something to do. Another match that's just a match for the sake of it. It's just a singles match, just a grudge feud. Uh, you know, no titles on the line or anything like that. But it does have some potential stakes going forward. It is Tony D'Angelo against Tommaso Ciampa? This was set up when Tommaso Ciampa was cutting a promo about how his time in NXT seems like it's heading towards an end, and whether or not that's going to end at stand and deliver is up in the air. And, you know, uh, I'm going to write my own fairy tale and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And Tony D'Angelo came out. Now, Tony D'Angelo had been teasing for several weeks that he knew something that he was going to be doing for stand and deliver that would put him on the map. Turns out he's trying to take out one of the big, big heads of NXT, one of the holdovers from the black and gold era of one of the people who, is a multi-time world champion and everything for NXT. Uh, I'm not. I'm not really feeling it, to be honest. I like D'Angelo to an extent. Huge fan of Champa. I'm interested to see whether or not this is the end of his run in NXT. But I don't feel like this really matters if it's not the case. And if it does, I'm more interested in that than I am in this match. It has to be the end of his run in NXT. Has to be. And I feel like we said this about every Chompa match for the last two years. But in this case, when you're advertising it, like, I'm going out and I'm writing my own fairy tale ending. Like, it has to be the end of his run. I don't care about Tony D. Like, it's very meh. You know, it's very, it's very blah for me. It's, it was a fun meme for a little bit, but they ran it into the ground quick. And I don't get why he's being pushed as like this. Future face of the brand. You know, it's, it seems a bit silly. Like, I'd rather Grayson Waller in this role against Ciampa. You know, I agree. Out, yeah. He took out Johnny and all that stuff, so I'd rather Waller. But this should be fun. I would normally say Ciampa should go out on his back, but I feel like he already did that with Breaker, so he should beat Tony D here. Yeah, I can't say that I'm super excited about this because uh, Tony's Tony D's a fine worker. Like he's he's not bad. He's not great. Chump is great. I assume he'll try and drag out the best match that Tony's D's had so far in this entire uh, run with NXT. But a lot of the momentum that D'Angelo's had has kind of fizzled out because of. It was great with the main potential, and then he stopped really doing vignettes, and we had to start taking him seriously when he was feuding with people like Pete Dunne and stuff. And now people aren't super excited because they can't just laugh at the meme. Ha, ah, the funny guy says things in Italian. Or says it in a really thick New York accent. And now he's got... Yeah, now he's in a big match. Potentially, Chumper's final match in NXT is against this guy. And I don't think the Chumper should lose on the way out, but 
they have a certain philosophy when it comes to this, especially when it comes to NXT call-ups. I'm still not 100% convinced that Chumper is going up to the main roster because he's shown no indication of wanting to do that, at least on a permanent basis. Yeah, but at this point, he's been there like every week for the last month or so. So he's got to be used to it by now. He's done enough main event matches, dark matches, and special appearances on Monday Night Raw to make me think that he's come around to the idea. But that doesn't I, I, mean, like you said, it doesn't mean that he needs to go out on his back if he does. He could win this well, match and use that to be like his momentum going forward. To me, like it's all the more reason why he shouldn't. Because if he's already on Raw and making a splash, you really want the guy that lost to Tony D? Well, I would go so far to say it again. I don't know anything, so they could be completely off base with this one. I would be more willing to believe the chump is leaving rather than going up to the main roster. You know what? That's a good point. Just Cal leaving entirely. Fun point. Yeah, Cal- yeah. I think he. I think his either his contract is up, or he's just not gonna. Yeah, or yeah, he just wants to leave the company after that because he seemed pretty again. People can change, plans can change, all of that stuff. But he seemed pretty hell-bent a couple of years ago when he said that he was never really intending to leave NXT, especially with his uh, neck issues. So I don't I don't know. Yeah, things might have changed. He might feel more comfortable doing that. But it's a very demanding schedule going on the main roster compared to NXT. And I don't know whether he would be willing to make that adjustment, especially because realistically he's not going to get any real major push on the main roster. I'm still holding out hope that he is going to go on the main roster, if not just for a shorter stint or something. And I'm thinking that he actually wins this match. It could be the same way one way or another. They could have him win and then he leaves. They could have him win and then he goes to Raw or SmackDown. But I'd be interested to see in particular what he could do on SmackDown. We need more people on that brand for sure. I and see. But like Raw is in rough shape, too. Because the whole company is. That's the had, problem. They, but Raw has no main eventers. To the point where this whole Brock and Roman thing has been a SmackDown feud and it's being dragged over to Raw for the last week just well, so I, they can have something. I think that that's just because they've decided to put the... You know, that's the problem with the, the brand split, essentially, is if you get rid of the brand split, you're just going to make it seem like the one brand has nobody or whatever but if you look at it i mean monday night raw has finn balor and aj styles and seth rollins and kevin owens they have a lot of main eventers i guess it's because they had no belt the last month or so well, right well that's the argument that's the argument they have a lot of main eventers but they actually have no main eventers yeah they have no main event title but they have the people that could well, do it no, well, no, realistically, no, realistically, like they aren't. have balor but they're not using balor as a main event guy right you know? yeah, and realistically none of those guys are quote unquote main event because neither of them are a roman reigns or b brock lesnar yeah so it's just a matter of that's what happens when you have the one champion kind of deal and i don't think that champa being on Monday Night Raw ends up actually helping that out you know no he won't be a main event though and you like he, might get the, he, he might get the, he might get brands, but are not. He might get make the cur- get the courtesy United States title or Intercontinental Championship run that people like Ricochet and stuff get, but it won't really mean anything in the grand scheme of things. He'll just Balor, be another spoke another spoke on the wheel. Look at Balor. Balor's ceiling is Champa's ceiling. Was Gar- Gargano's ceiling? Balor went from headlining every takeover to like, oh, you're back here. Okay, cool. Maybe U.S. title. Like, I think that's the ceiling for them. But I still think Ciampa should go up because there's nothing for him in NXT. And if he's going to stay in any capacity, he needs to go up. In any case, like we said, he could go out losing the way that, you know, traditionally a lot of people do. Or he could just beat Tony D'Angelo. And the fact that it's I mean, maybe I'm just underselling this or, or overlooking things or whatever, but. Tony D was fun as a meme, and then they killed him by turning him heel. And ever since then, it's just not been anywhere near as interesting to follow his career. And he, you know, he could be have a good career or whatever like that. But I don't want to see Tony D'Angelo beat Tommaso Ciampa and have that be Ciampa's last match in NXT, whether he goes to the main roster or not. 
I would just much rather have Champa win. If he would have lost to Gunther, or if he lost to Breaker, or if he lost even to like Carmelo Hayes or Grayson Waller, like I mean, if Waller took out Champa and Gargano, that would be a major boost to Waller. If it was Escobar, it, there's a lot of different people that I'd be totally cool with, Roderick Strong or you know whatever. But I don't want Tony D'Angelo to be the last person for that. So if that is the last match, I'm hoping Ciampa wins. And I actually am leaning more towards Ciampa winning no matter what, though. Yeah, I'm going to say Ciampa. Yep, Ciampa. Ciampa for me as well. So that's two of the grudge match type things. We got some championships on the line for all the other matches. And they're all, uh, well, not all of them. Actually, no, there's one other one's a singles match, but three of them are including more than one challenger. So that should be kind of interesting. Um, we have the NXT Tag Team Championship, which is a triple threat match. Imperium, Walking In as Champions. We're going to face the winners of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. And this year, man, that Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic was all over the place, fucked up and not working right. Not only did that tournament start where they did the whole thing that they did the previous year, where it was like, okay, let's do the men's tournament and then we'll wait a little bit to do the women's because we don't have enough. They actually ended up waiting even longer to do the women's because it was like, oh, we have even less than we thought and we really are running out of time. But we'll get to that in a moment too. Instead, the winners of the men's was the Creed Brothers. And they had been planned to have a match against Imperium and suddenly they get attacked behind the scenes and we don't know who did it at this point. We still have one more episode of NXT left to where that might be revealed because last night on NXT, they did a whole thing where it was like somebody spray painting, trashing the room and, you know, you haven't found us yet, but you know, we're going to fuck up your room or whatever the hell they said. They didn't say that, but you know, <laughs> you didn't find us. So we found you. There you go. You know, uh, AKA we fucked up your room. LOL. LOL. Uh, MSK stepped in and took the place of the Creed brothers. And then that set up a whole idea of the Creed brothers attacking them. And you know, why don't we do a triple threat and whatever? I don't like this. Uh, and it's not a matter of not liking the teams. Cause I think the Creed brothers have a lot of upside. I hate their finisher with a passion, by the way, that, low angle, not forceful clothesline when the person's sitting down, it's terrible, but they have an upside to them. MSK is a lot of fun. Imperium's great, especially Marcel Bartel, but I don't like at all that MSK just gets thrown in here to be like the de facto baby face tag team. It defeats the purpose of the dusty roads tag team classic. I don't get a sense that, this is happening for any reason other than I get the flippy guys in there and then that can, you know, somebody's cheering for them. I would have much rather have seen just Imperium versus the Creed brothers. And I know that that's just weird to see like a heel team against the heel team, but fuck it, do it. You have baby faces versus baby faces. It can work. Crowd will just find somebody to cheer. Probably the Creed brothers. Probably get a USA chant out of it or something. I don't know. But I mean, the match is going to be good. But I'm just underwhelmed. How are you guys feeling? I'm excited. Like tag team matches in NXT are always good. They're the one, even the one at uh, War Games with Wagner and Kyle O'Reilly was fun. So tag team matches are good. I'm sure this will be good. I'm genuinely interested to see who attacked them. I'm wondering if they brought someone in or what they're doing there. But I'm interested to see who actually attacked the Creed brothers. So there's that hook there as well. And yeah, it'll be fun. Um, I can't say I'm super excited again about this. I, I don't have the same affinity for MSK as other people do. Well, Tony at the very least does. Uh, I think they're pretty, they're okay, but they're yeah. pretty, but that's, that's as far as I kind of would go. They're just, Eh, they're a nice flippy team and the crowd absolutely hates them. And so it's hard to kind of get invested in their matches. They're not some game changing, breaking the mold type of tag team. They're just eh, they're flippy guys. Yeah. But the, the issue is the fact that the crowd is, has decided for some 
random reason, which I think we've discussed in the past, but won't go into. They absolutely despise them. And so it's hard if they're meant to be the baby face you're supposed to get behind. If everyone else is basically saying, yeah, we don't like these guys, then it's hard to really invest yourself in those matches. Uh, Imperium are great. Love Imperium. I think uh, they'll be the glue that holds this match together. The Creed brothers are interesting in the fact that I think they have tons of potential. I think they're a bit reckless at the moment. And by that, I mean, I- I'm going mainly back to a clip I saw on YouTube of their um, segment where they burst in on the tag title match between MSK and Imperium and started throwing everybody around. And I started thinking, well, they have absolutely no control about where they're throwing these people. I think that yep. they're still, they're obviously still green. And I think having MSK and Imperium in this match is kind of to alleviate that side of things for the Creed brothers, but they will inevitably probably win the championship. So they they would be, they, yeah, they would be my choice. But yeah, I think I think that you put the two more experienced teams to make up for the shortcomings that the Creeds present in the ring at this point in their careers. Yeah, I'm going uh, Creed brothers as well. Yeah, I'm currently leaning towards the Creed brothers winning and actually pinning one of the members of MSK, and then that way. Imperium can be like, you know, oh, you know, you didn't beat us, so let's have a rematch, and then they can milk it for one more thing. Because they can get away with doing that on television and having that Capital Wrestling Center crowd. Imperium versus Creed Brothers, much better than on, like, a pay-per-view, filling out uh, an arena. What, what arena is this? I forget. The American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. Ah, that's right. So if you, think if you think they're filling it out, then you probably have another thing coming. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that's going to be the case. I mean, they would have. They're filling it out at one in the afternoon on a day that includes a shit ton of wrestling in Dallas. Yeah, Ugh. I, they would have if it would have been the black and gold type of people, and if it would have been on Saturday on night and Saturday Sunday. night, or if it would have been if Friday instead of SmackDown, or you know, I mean. They're in a bad position right now, but whatever it is, I'm sure throwing some extra people on the card is going to potentially help in some fashion. So at least if you got a babyface team in there, it's justifiable. I don't know who they're going to end up going with as the ones that attacked the Creed Brothers, but that's all the more reason why I think Creed Brothers win the titles here. You get them to beat MSK. I think MSK actually is going to be going up to the main roster. Sometime relatively soon, maybe they not. Might as they well. definitely need to get out of that arena. Yeah, the they do. Because because there is a subject. Because it seems like there's the same people that turn up over and over again, and so they're the ones that for some reason don't like this team. And so wasn't it something about like, like Izzy out, or something? Yeah, it was something to do with um. I think Izzy's parents. They, I think it was something to do with the fact that they criticised having like Izzy getting choke slam when she was twelve years old. Which ah. is where I think it's criticised because it's a dumb thing to do. Yeah, and uh, and then Izzy's parents basically went, "Oh, we really don't like these guys." And when they came to NXT, we're just going to make their life a living hell. Mm. And yeah, that's basically been the case because even though I think that the, the source of the problem is pretty much disappeared, the remnants still remain, and people are now finding it fun to boo these guys. Yeah. So getting them out and putting them on either Raw or SmackDown, and so they can be in front of different audiences every week is probably the best thing for them. And guaranteed someone's not going to know who they are. You know, so they have a oh, chance. No one on the main roster will know who they are. Yeah. Right. So they'll have like a fresh chance. Yeah. And, you know, you've got that connection with Riddle now. So if they want to bring them on, it could always be like, okay, well, down the line, Riddle can team up with them. It's a six-man tag or something. I do think you get Creed Brothers winning the titles here. You get the Imperium rematch happening on the week after or the week after that or something while they reveal who ended up attacking them. And then we end up getting the Creed Brothers against whoever those people are in the future. But I have no guesses right now of who they might be. They've ruled out a lot of teams like Onofi and Blade, of course, make no sense. But they are they bothered to rule them out. They bothered to rule out Russell and Young Veterans. It's certainly not going to be Brooks Jensen and Josh Briggs. I highly doubt it's Bodie Hayward and Andre Trace doing that. Uh, you know, the only thing that makes sense to me is Joe Gacy and Harlan, but doesn't seem like that's the direction that they're going either. I'd be shocked as all hell if it was jacket time. That's for sure. It I'm assuming they, it's a new the, team. Um, yeah. Yeah. From some of the uh, call-ups, one of the call-ups, but the people from the performance center. 
Yeah, I mean, there are some people that every once in a while, like, they didn't even put these in the Performance Center new recruits, but, like, there's a guy named Quincy who's going to be on NXT. Quincy Elliott. Yeah, yeah, I meant to tell you that. It's Quincy Elliott. Quincy Elliott. And I'm like, I'd never heard of this guy. Why isn't he on the, uh, the Performance Center thing? Because it's just, I guess, I don't know, we'll announce it later. And then it's like they filed for the trademark for his name in, like, January? Like, where did I miss this thing? So there are people that are just complete blind spot right now. And there's a list of people on the website that you can see on smartcatmoment.com that are like, you know, AJ Ferrari and uh, Joe Spivak and there's Spivak or I don't know how to pronounce it. Still don't even know if some of these are even NXT people or if they're referee names like, you know, they've Joey Tofino. I don't know. I think it's a referee. Maybe who knows? But I believe so. I can see there being new people that they bring in more so than anything else. And if you're going to have them feud with somebody, it makes a lot more sense for them to feud with the Creed Brothers than with Imperium. So we're all going Creed Brothers here. I think that's the most logical potential outcome. Yep. And I don't think that this is going to be one of those cases where it's like, okay, let's check off all the championships changing hands. Because one, I can pretty much guarantee is not going to change hands is the North American Championship. What are you talking about? Yeah, Carmelo Hayes is in this very rare, weird situation where he is, I think it was Callum that had said this uh, the best way, he is being booked like the biggest baby face, despite the fact that he is supposed to be one of the biggest yeah. heels. He's the biggest uh, take on all challengers fighting champion that you can ever potentially see. Now, I will put it this way. The reason why he stands out in particular is because every other heel champion, to an, to an extent, is doing the same thing. The difference with Carmelo is that I like the fact that Carmelo Hayes does it because he's a cocky SOB, and he thinks that he is the greatest person on the roster. So it would make sense that, oh, it's a big match for the North American Championship, a ladder match. I can definitely win that because I'm the greatest wrestler there is. And so I I still think that he maintains the heel aspect despite being an, a, a fighting champion. But that's only because he thinks that he's better than everyone else. Yeah, I mean, if he wasn't cutting promos all the time about how he's the A champion and, you know, you put anybody up against him, he's going to win them because uh, he's going to beat them because he's going to win everything because he when he shoots, he doesn't miss and all that. It works a lot better for him than it does when Mandy Rose is just sort of like, I'll fight anybody. And by that, I mean, I don't want to fight anybody. <laughs> you know, it's mm. all stupid. But like that, that should be Mandy's disposition, but we'll get to her. So Carmelo Hayes flat out suggests, hey, I should have a match and I should put my title on the line and it should be <laughs> in a ladder match and it should be against four people. And it's like, hold on, because I want to I want to point this out. Carmelo Hayes is smarter than 90% of the main roster. Because he figured it out. How do you get booked? I guess so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all the people that are trying to get into WrestleMania weekend, and they're all just kind of like, hmm, 24-7 title? <laughs> like, you know. Uh, but we've done some matches here, and we have established some of the people that are going to be in this match. Uh, Grayson Waller is somebody who has qualified. He had beaten a kid last night. Santos Escobar qualified by beating Cameron Grimes and Solo Sokoa beat Roderick Strong. And then there was one missing person. And I had been thinking leading up to this that the game plan for the missing person was going to be, oh, look at this. It's a surprise return from so-and-so or it's a surprise call up from here or here's this NXT UK person who's going to come in. Like it would have made sense to me if it would have been like suddenly a kid is going to have a, a UK match and the you know, match against, uh, I don't know who would be a good person with Jordan Devlin. Uh, one of those two is going to be in this match and we're just going to cross over instead. They went in another direction, but it's something that makes equal, if not more or better sense, a kid camera Grimes and Roderick strong. The three losers are going to have triple threat match on the next episode. And the winner of that, it's their second chance. They get put back in the match. What, what do you mean? It makes sense. If they're, they're the ones that are, if they're, they're the losers. ones that are all worthy of qualifying, <laughs> potentially. No, you tell me there's no, there aren't two any other people on the roster that could fill in the spot. You know, two people that haven't lost their opportunity already. Well, they could go in that direction, but they decided that 
these people are the six that are in contention to qualify. They could have very easily yeah. just said Von Wagner against uh, Zion Quinn and gone with that. And that would have made, you know, way more sense. But instead of just saying like, okay, well, instead we're just going to give the match to Roof Fang. And then it'd be like, what? They you know, have, they could have at least had some fun with it. They could have said, okay, we're going to enter the free losers and every, like tons of other people in the roster in a battle royal. That would have been cool. And yeah. then you could then have you, had, you know, those people like Roof Fang and, Dante yeah, Chen. Then you and, can have your cake uh, and eat it too. You can have one of these three guys who you clearly want to put into this match win the battle royal. And then you could also have everyone else involved that hasn't had an opportunity so far. So that's yeah, just it, it always grinds my gears about how the losers get another opportunity because it just that that really um makes the whole qualification process pretty much redundant. It's like, okay, why don't I just lose in a minute, save myself, let the other two guys go through a grueling match, and then I'll try and win the triple threat afterwards. Because then you have two people. Yeah, but you can have two tired people, and you'll be the fresh one. (laughs) True. Again, it it carries the same sort of like logic in the fact that like, you don't feel as pressured to qualify first time round because you're given enough opportunity. Especially because of the fact that Cameron Grimes is now his character is built around the fact that he never wins the big one or never gets the big opportunity. Well, well, I, I wonder who's going to win the triple threat match. Well, it's not going to be Roderick strong. <laughs> no, it won't be Roderick strong. I mean, <laughs> For and, multiple A-Kid, reasons. A-Kid has a chance because he's new. Right. But I think they've already, they've already kind of just buried the lead with that by having him lose his second match on the main, on the roster. So, yeah. And I know he had the little um, scuffle with Carmelo Hayes after he lost, but... I think that that's just going to lead to a TV match in a week or in the weeks after uh, the show with him and Trick Williams, probably. And then, but I think Cameron Grimes is the obvious choice of going into this ladder match. See, Strong's in a weird spot because despite the fact that he's involved in this North American title match and he lost a championship to begin with, well, he lost technically the other championship, the Cruiserweight, but, you know, it's not either here nor there. But he's also just doing some stints in NXT UK right now. Like they kind of almost traded him with a kid and I don't know why that's necessarily happening. Maybe it's just for something to do. Maybe it's utilize him as much as you can. And then he's going to be leaving soon or something. Cause we do have that looming post WrestleMania set of releases. And I just assume Roderick strong is going to be one of those. So I'm writing him off entirely. If by some random chance he's in this match, that's going to be incredibly shocking. But it's A Kid or Cameron Grimes, and A Kid's got a good chance here. But realistically speaking, not to crap on the brand or anything, but as much as NXT UK has been around longer than this NXT 2.0 experiment, NXT in a uh, uh, like in its normal format is vastly more popular than NXT UK and NXT is still nowhere near the main roster type of thing. And if you're going to try to run a show, a pay-per-view before WrestleMania on the same day, and you're hoping to fill out as much as you can, you're not going to put a kid in the match over Cameron Grimes. You're going to get them a guy who's been around more and who's more popular so I'm very much assuming Cameron Grimes is that last person, but I don't think he's winning the title. I think that this is definitely Carmelo Hayes retaining Cameron Grimes being upset about it afterward. And maybe they start going in another direction with his character or something. I don't know, but I think Escobar's there to fill out a number and to be a veteran in the match. I think Sokoa's there because they like him. I think that Waller is there because he is being treated like a big deal. Hayes is obviously there because he's the champion and because he's a big deal. I think Cameron Grimes runs this, uh, rounds this out and we just get Hayes retaining. Well, Grimes makes the most sense because he cut an emotional promo about how he needs to prove to his dad that he can do it. And he made this promise to his dad before he died and all that. But then they had A-Kid attack the champion. So, and we do need a baby face because even though I think I know how this is going, should be 
more baby faces than there are because it's very heel heavy. And yeah, I think Grayson Waller wins. Waller? Yeah. Hmm. I was not expecting it to turn into that. I was like, <laughs> you know, we need more baby faces. It's heel heavy. Waller's going to win the championship for me. Well, Waller's going to win because why else do you do? Why do you have a champion defend their title in a multi-person ladder match? Oh, I know. So it can go from heel to heel with nobody having to take a pinfall. I mean, that could be the excuse for Grimes winning and Hayes being like, the only reason you won is because you climbed the ladder and you didn't pin me. No, it could be. And I, I would be all for Grimes winning if he gets in, but I'm not sold that it's not going to go to a kid or you know, someone else just yet. But I do think that Waller is the guy for this brand. So start that by giving him the North American title. Hayes loses nothing losing a ladder match and he can always go up to the NXT title, he can go up to the main roster because he's got more charisma and apparently a bigger brain than 90% of the roster. <laughs> uh, God, Hayes is fantastic. And I see nothing but great things for him, but I think Waller needs the big win here. Otherwise, you could have done the last man standing match at TakeOver. You got to vote for Waller or vote for Hayes? Where are you uh, on this fence, Callum? I think it would be a sensible decision to call Carmelo Hayes up to the main roster because he is incredibly charismatic and I think he would fit in as something that is actually fresh and different on the main roster. And if that was the case, my like very um, more pragmatic choice is Carmelo Hayes just because I feel like he's doing a very good job and I don't feel that they would take the title off of him. But if their inclination is to move Hayes up, my choice would be Cameron Grimes. Even though he hasn't even technically qualified yet. I think that he will qualify and he will win the championship if they just, if the decision is to move Carmelo up. Uh, the reason why I'm not going for Santos is because I feel like he's just spinning his wheels there at the moment. He's there to be a cool spot guy, but nothing much else. I think there's a good possibility that they do something involving Legada del Fantasma and the Mysterios post-WrestleMania which may involve mm -hmm. one side going up or just the Mysterios coming down for a brief period to NXT for a while. Uh, you know, so well, oh, hold on. I just want to add on to that real quick. The Mysterios should go down and then that's how you split them because Dominic can go, you know, I think I need to stay here for a while and hone my craft and then, you know, they can do whatever, whenever, but I think that's actually a good idea. I mean, I'd be totally cool with the idea that Dominic joins Legato <laughs> del Fantasma and they throw a mask on him or something, or, you know, like, there's ways you can play around with that. But yeah, they did seem to tease that idea that Mysterious would be involved in that. And, you know, I mean, they're clearly wanting to take people from the main roster and put them on NXT to try to boost the ratings. So that's the case. I still would love to see the Usos do something with Solo Sokoa. I know that they're trying but, to yeah. stay away from it, but like, he's very clearly one of the usos and it's like and very clearly my god those jeans are strong i mean the guy fucking puts up the we the ones thing even so it's like yeah just fucking call him solo uso or whatever the, that's doesn't make any sense but like <laughs> well, well that's why, that's, why I don't like, that's why i don't think he'll win anything because i think no. he's just in nxt to give him some initial experience before they do calling up calling him up as a third uso yeah um and then I think Grayson Waller will be NXT champion by mid mid year, and so he doesn't need the North American Championship at this point. Yeah, I would I would agree with you, but they have Walter. Why do you need you know? Because they care more about Waller than they do about. Walter. That's fair. Because otherwise they would have kept his name as Walter. Walter, yeah. <laughs> well, between him and Hayes and Waller, those are the three. And then I yeah. guess Von Wagner would be number four. Are the ones that stand out the most is who's going to be Braun Breaker. That's of course. We'll get to that in a minute. But if we could be just someone from the main roster because they did it this time. <laughs> true. Yeah. Uh, if something other than any of these things happens, that'll be very interesting. But uh, my vote goes to Hayes. Uh, Rob's goes to Waller, and uh, Callum's goes to Hayes with the asterisk if Cameron Grimes is in. That, that would make more sense, which I agree on. 
And, uh, I mean, you know, we'll figure out next week who qualifies and loop that into like the hot tags or something, but I don't think it's going to change our opinions about anything. I'll say that this, it'll be one of the more fun matches on Saturday night across oh, all shows. <laughs> yeah, this, this is the match to, if you are coming to the show, this is the match probably you'll get the most enjoyment out of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, look at the people involved. Waller is not somebody who's, you know, Adam Cole levels or anything like that, but Waller's got some fun stuff to him. We know that he's willing to jump from a high ledge and do like a uh, elbow, an elbow drop or something. So he's got that. Escobar's fucking great. Sokoa's got some good stuff. Carmelo Hayes is great. And if we get Cameron Grimes or a kid or Roderick Strong, you know that they can pull off some stuff too. So, so this is the match. One. It's going to be a lot of fun. Who, if anyone, with gear or however it may be, does a Razor Ramon tribute for the ladder match? Hmm. I could see. I, I mean, it's not Santos. It's not going to be Grimes. It's not going to be Sokoa. It hey, wouldn't be. Okay. Hayes. Hayes makes the most sense. I don't. I don't think Waller would do it because it would get a baby face pop. There's a slight chance Escobar could do something that would be like. You know, it's slightly inspired by that, but I I lean my way more towards Hayes. I would say either Hayes or Escobar because I think they're the only two that would do it. And I know Hayes is working very closely with Sean. Right. If anything, maybe he has like some sort of gear. That'd be great if somebody could figure out a way to like mesh the two where it's like one pant leg kind of looks a little bit more like the Shawn Michaels design. One pant leg kind of looks like uh, the uh, Razor Ramon one or, you know, one boots like that or whatever it might be. I don't know. I don't fucking know anything about fashion, but <laughs> hopefully there's that spot that kind of, calls back to that and hopefully this is just as good if not better than the one that ricochet won definitely something to look forward to i can't quite feel the same about the fatal (sighs) four-way okay for the nxt women's championship but i will specify this when it was mandy rose versus cora jade the only thing i wrote on the website was seen it don't care you know, kind of like it, it's happened three times. Why should I give a shit this time? Core Jade wins the title. Now, for some weird way of going around this Dusty Rhodes tag team classic thing, Io Shirai and Kaylee Ray beat Wendy Chu and Dakota Kai because fuck it, the whole tournament is just let's pair two random ass people for the sake of it because they get rid of these goddamn titles. And instead of Io Shirai and Kaylee Ray, getting a tag team title match the way that it's supposed to go. They cut a promo afterward, which was a God awful promo by the way. And they say, Hey, how about instead of the two of us who won a tag team tournament for a tag team title shot, how about we just get into the world women's championship match and we make it a fatal four way. And then Cora Jade comes out to help those two fight off the three members of Toxic Attraction, and they all pose together, all happy and friends, and they're all going to fight each other at Mandy Rose. This felt so ass backwards to me, and I, I know what they're going for here, which is just, look, Jade versus Rose doesn't matter if we've seen it it's not going to be a great selling point so if we throw in Io Shirai, for, pal. well I, there's multiple parts if we throw Io Shirai and kaylee ray in there at least they are two more names that we can get in there and also they can hold down the fort with the match <laughs> and then maybe there's a chance that the title changes hands in some fashion and it's you know oh mandy rose didn't get pinned or whatever like that but I just don't care still like Shirai was champion. She's great. Cora Jade's got a lot of potential going for her, but I don't think that she's ready to have that responsibility. Mandy Rose is Mandy Rose. You know, we've, we've seen what she has as champion and I'm not super loving it, but whatever. And Kaylee Ray, you know, she held the title in NXT UK way longer than I thought she should have. But no matter what happens here, unless Cora Jade wins and it's just, oh, look at that. Then ultimately it's it's still just blah to me. 
I hate this. I think this is... You can't shit on women's tag team wrestling more than they have in the last year. It's so clear that they want no women's tag titles, and yet they have two sets. I don't know why you didn't just do Toxic Attraction loses all their belts. I don't know why you're like, I know, let's add more women to this match. Why Cora Jade isn't fuming that she had a one-on-one shot at Mandy, and now she's like, yay, I get my friends, even (laughs) though I can lose this match without even losing this match. I, honest to God, I love Io Shirai to death. I think she had the best NXT women's title reign of the last little while, but I don't know what she could possibly do in this era of NXT. I think Kaylee Ray needs to go to the main roster. There's nothing for her in this era of NXT. The main roster still kind of cares more about women's wrestling. And I think while that's still the case, Get Kaylee up there with Becky. Get her up there with Bianca. Get her up there with Rhea, Charlotte, and those women. Because right now, she sticks out like a sore thumb in terms of ability. But at the end of the day, the only two women that fit the vibe of this current NXT are Mandy and Cora. And therefore, I can't be like, I'm glad we added more steps to this. Because it's still got to go to Cora at the end of the day. And it better be here and not back at the Performance Center when you had the chance to show her off in front of the world, or at least outside of Florida. So, this match won't be as good as the other matches we've discussed so far. I mean, it's hard. It's hard. To, it, it, I feel bad because Kay, I feel bad for Kelly and Eo because even though they won the tag tournament, they're being used as the anchors for this match because they're both leaps and bounds better in the ring than either Mandy Rose or Cora Jade. Cora has very little going for her as the plucky baby face coming into this. She already played the whole Home Alone uh, (laughs) uh, Wiley Coyote routine last week and got absolutely got her ass kicked for it and spray painted on. And so she comes into this as like a huge loser. They've thrown two other more, way more established stars into the match. And now she comes on. She was already coming off as the third wheel when it was a one-on-one match. And now she's like a fifth wheel in a four-person match. And uh, the sad thing is that she's probably going to win. Because they need to, they probably do need to switch the titles at some point. And EO's already held it. She's too big for the brand at this point. Kaylee has already been the longest reigning and it's the UK women's champion. She's too big for this brand. They both would be better fits on the main roster. Cora is so not ready for the main roster. She is probably, as Tony alluded to, she's not ready to be NXT women's champion either. But you need to get that belt off Mandy because Mandy is suffocating this entire brand. And the whole Toxic Attraction crew, I don't know why they not proceed with tag titles, but that's obviously just due to the fact that they don't have the need for them to compete. They don't want to add a seventh match to this show, or there's some other reason why they can't compete for the tag titles instead. So it's better now that it's a fatal four way than it would have been if it was just Jade versus Manny Rose one on one. But I'm not super excited still. And yeah, I still think Jade is going to win. Either way, it just adds a bit more jeopardy and hopefully a bit more. At least the mo- moments when uh, Kaylee Ray and I sure I'll be wrestling will be decent to watch. Ultimately, I'm going with Jade still wins the championship, but that's very, very like I keep going back and forth. I keep I leaning cor- towards that, or I keep going with, well, Mandy Rose just retains. So I want Cora Jade to win. Like, that's my preferred outcome. I think Mandy wins because they all get in each other's way. And you do have the two other members of Toxic Attraction that can get involved. Yeah, I I will say, though, the entire booking of Cora Jade leading into this women's title match has been somewhat... Again, WWE standards are low to start with, but it's, 
it's even pl- plummeting below the usual standards for NXT booking, or for WWE booking champions toward or contenders towards a championship match. Like she's gotten her ass kicked in most circumstances. The only wins that she's gotten over Toxic Attraction is her stealing the title belts from them and capturing two of them in contraptions last week. And now she has to come out and support the two people that have essentially butted into her title match. And yeah, and they're way more established. They'll probably do a six woman mm-hmm. tag next week. Guaranteed. When yeah. As for, how will the three of them coexist when they yeah. fight each other for the <laughs> titles afterwards? And yeah, but we'll see how that happens. But it's yeah, not a great time for the NXT women's uh, roster right now. Which, of course, what? the way that they do the six woman tag is exactly the way that they do it. There's all there's there's two potential outcomes: the three of them argue, and that's how Toxic Attraction wins. Or they beat Toxic Attraction, and it's, well, the three of them were able to work together for this match, but now they're all fighting with each other afterward, and let's kind of uh, backtrack and remember that the match is happening that way. Yeah, it's there's really no way of doing it other than that. It's just bland. For what it's worth, I really like Toxic Attraction, and I think that they should just be brought up to the main roster and flank Sonya. It should be Mandy, Sonya... And the other two, like, I think that works out great. We know Mandy and Sonya are friends. It's not like, you know, you got to carry over that they really had heat with one another. You know, they're friends. Have them be Sonya's heavy while she's doing this. I'm the authority thing. I mean, enough times to pass by, too. They could just be like, oh, we settled our differences. Yeah, I mean, look at uh, Rollins and Owens. They're friends, right? Yeah. After having a WrestleMania feud that dragged itself out for way too long. Uh, I mean, I'm totally cool with Toxic Attraction going up to the main roster and they'd have to lose the titles for that to be the case. But man, more than anything, I really just wish that they didn't have an NXT uh, Women's Tag Team Championship because they don't need it. Shame. I'm ultimately just 50-50 kind of Rose and Jade. Right now, I'm leaning a little bit more towards Jade. But, I mean, tomorrow I'll probably go with Rose. The next day I'll probably go Jade. It it doesn't really matter. It's one of those two. (laughs) And if it's Rose, whatever. If it's Jade, okay, we know that the game plan was to just put this on the new girl and spotlight her that way, which, yeah, it's fine. But it's not the most engaging, captivating story. Speaking of that, we got Dolph Ziggler heading in here as NXT champion he beat Braun Breaker for the title. Breaker's got another chance. And it's really a question of one thing or the other. Does he go up to the main roster and lose here? And for some reason, stand and deliver ends in some sort of disappointment? <laughs> or is it the way that I think it's going to go? They took the belt off of Braun Breaker so he could win the belt back at WrestleMania weekend. They took the belt off of Braun Breaker so he could win it back at WrestleMania weekend. Obviously, but I, look, I will never say a bad thing about Ziggler. It's fun to see him being used in some capacity. And I've enjoyed this, and I bet you they'll have a damn good match because Ziggler will probably be somewhat motivated, actually, to steal the show. And when's the last time he really felt like that? The feud has been fun. It's paint by numbers, but it's fun. We got to hear Glorious last night. I enjoyed that. I don't know how they missed on Rude, and I'll never get over that, but that's another story. I just think Breaker wins and is probably also inducting his father and uncle into the Hall of Fame, but they have yet to announce that. Strange, right? No announcement this week. I'm, yeah, I'm sure this match will be very good. They're both good wrestlers. They both, the feud's been pretty good. I don't, I honestly don't know what the benefit was of having Ziggler win the title other than shock value. And maybe that's enough. But it's, I don't know why you couldn't just have had Breaker beat Tommaso Ciampa in the triple threat match and then Ziggler gets a rematch for the title here and have Braun Baker beat him again. It's just, okay, we've given Ziggler his uh, five year bone. 
essentially thrown thrown that over to him and that'll keep him that'll shut him up for the next few time where we're just going to keep him in the tag team division and then he can shout about how it should still be him as nxt champion <laughs> but um but yeah it should be a fine enough main event i expect bron breaker to regain the championship because i don't think they're going to call him up just yet and what's the alternative the alternative ziggler stays in nxt for a while i mean could be worse nobody's nobody's watching anyway so so i can't so it can't affect things too badly and yeah that's kind of it it's just a bit it's still a bit jarring coming to terms with the fact that he's the NXT champion. But he is the NXT champion. <laughs> the disdain. Like him. Like, of all, like the only thing why it could be more um, disheartening if it was the Miz who's the NXT champion. <laughs> I like the idea work. that they yeah, went with the, the Ziggler thing because he is somebody who really fits that kind of mold. And... I think that the mistake was having what, the triple threat what, match. What, what mold does he fit? A guy who's more of a wrestler than anything else. And if he would have been in this brand beforehand, then maybe that would have been slightly better for him in some fashion. See, I think he fits the mold of over the hill has been who best years are 10 years ago. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's it. So yeah, that's kind of where I stand. He should be the type of guy that's, appearing like this is kind of his gold watch almost so the fact he's never actually going to win a title of real meaning on the main roster in his career now so uh, he gets to come over to nxt he gets to play in the little leagues for a little while but he's a a baseball player that spent all his years being a um like an average player on the the roster who's benched yeah, the, the guy that like, will get you on first base every net, like get you on first base pretty pretty consistently, but will never is never going to hit a home run. If it does, it's probably just cannonballed up his face or something instead. Or if he does <laughs> hit a home run, he breaks his leg while he's running around the bases. And uh, and then um, yeah, now he's playing in the minor leagues and he's one of the biggest stars there. <laughs> well, I do think that the main game plan here was. Let's go with somebody who's established, somebody who's not doing anything else, somebody who we can put down there and it's not going to be something that's like strange. You know, I mean, it would have been really odd if it would have just been like, uh, like a Seth Rollins just goes back down and he's like, you know what? I'm going to hang around in NXT. Like Ziggler fits that mold. And don't get me wrong. He's going to bump like crazy for, Bron Breaker and make lo- make Bron Breaker look fantastic in this match, whatever the result ends up being, and that's that's what Ziggler is there for, and Ziggler does a very good job at that, and he's done that pretty much for pretty much every WWE champion who we don't take seriously after they feuded with Dolph Ziggler. That's basically basically what his role was. If it, oh Kofi Kingston's WWE champion, Drew McIntyre's WWE champion, put him with Dolph, and that what what he'll do for Bron Breaker as well. My bigger concern is the fact that they didn't think that there was anybody else on the NXT roster besides Bron Breaker that they're willing to put in the world title match at WrestleMania weekend. It's kind of a bit more of a damning indictment of everyone else on the roster. Again, you got Walter. I just, I I don't know why you didn't just, he's right there. You got Walter. Hmm. I think that they see a lot of positives for Breaker and they really wanted to almost kind of like undo that he had already won it. <laughs> and I'd like, oh man, you know, why did he beat uh Champa at what was it, New Year's Evil? Did he won? Yep. So it's like, you know, it was only January. I think that they're kind of like, shit, we should have waited until we had the big crowd to really anoint him. So let's just take the title off of him and then he can win it again. And then that way we can be like, see, that's that's really the way that we look at it because then in the future when you show footage of him as you know okay the newest uh, addition to the monday night raw roster is this guy and here's a quick set of clips to show you what braun breaker has been up to in nxt they're going to show you him winning the championship in front of a bigger crowd they're not going to show you him beating champa in front of nobody 
So I think that that's kind of the game plan, and it all just revolves around, hey, look, uh, shocking, Ziggler won, Ziggler goes on TV for a while, maybe that bumps the ratings, so then Ziggler can lose. And he does. The end. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And then we got Gunther, we got Walder, we've got uh, Hayes. We got these options of people that Breaker can feud with, and he drops the belt to somebody around SummerSlam or so, comes up to the main roster. I think it seems about like a reasonable direction for his uh, character. I think all of us are going Breaker. I don't think anybody's mm-hmm. going to make the, uh, <laughs> the, so, the argument that so Ziggler's going to win. I really want a new belt. And I like it's it's a stupid thing, but like I do want a new belt because I feel like it would help solidify this new era that they already ushered in twice now, but really feels like they can hammer it home at stand and deliver. But on the off chance that they don't want to give it to Breaker, he's another one. I know I've said it five times with different people today, but call him up too. He's Breaker is so good, like, and he's so ready. And raw main event talent. Like, he's fantastic. But yeah, he's going to win the belt. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we will figure this out next, not next Saturday, next Saturday's this one coming up on the 26th or so. But Saturday, April 2nd is when this pay per view is going to take place. I think it starts at noon or maybe it's one o'clock. I'm forgetting exactly when. But we will have live coverage of that up on smartgunmoba.com. We'll have a post show following it as well. And then, you know, we'll be figuring out who gets that final spot for the North American Championship match leading up to it. We'll talk about any other kinds of changes that happen along the way. Maybe we figure out who attacked the Creed Brothers. Maybe they change that into a Fatal 4-Way or something. I don't think so, but it's a possibility. So if there are changes, you will see them reflected on the website. And you will hear about them on the hot tags. And... I highly doubt that we're going to change our opinions, but if we do keep that in mind as well, uh, it could be a good show. Hopefully it is. Let us know what your thoughts are and who you think is going to win all these matches in the comments below. Another way for you to help us out on the monetary side of things that I forgot to mention earlier are the T public and Redbubble shops. Pick up some merchandise if you want and follow what we've got going here on the YouTube channel and what's coming up next, which should be the hot tags. Then next week we've got, all the WrestleMania stuff that we haven't gotten to yet. So we got predictions for WrestleMania night one and night two. We have potentially something with wrestling with the past about the hall of fame, but that kind of hasn't really happened yet. So I don't know what's happening there, but you'll figure it out. I'll post something up on Twitter or the mega maniacs, Facebook group or something. As long as you're subscribed to the channel, as long as you keep checking here, as long as you keep going to smart and you follow also on Facebook and Twitter at smart out moment. You'll get more information about that when we know, make sure to do the same for fanboys anonymous, go to fanboysanonymous.com, See what's happening there. Uh, a couple of movies coming out over the next few weeks. Morbius is one of them. I don't know if I'm going to bother to do a movie review or if I'm just going to write something up or whatever, but if it is, you'll find it there. Maybe something about Sonic the Hedgehog too. Cause that seems like that could be a real fun movie. I like the first one. That was cool. We did our most recent pick a poison for the man who knew too little. Thank you to Marco for that. That was really fun. And, uh, you know, whatever's happening there, you'll follow it at fanboys. Make sure you follow me at Tony mango. Make sure you follow what these guys are up to as well. Rob. Yeah. You can follow me everywhere at dude Felice on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, all that good stuff. And check out fightful.com because Sean Ross Sapp will have, boots on the ground in Dallas and I'm sure a ton of news will be broken during WrestleMania weekend, including Cody Rhodes, which may or may not happen before WrestleMania. You can find me on Twitter at Wing West 14. Check out all the stuff on the smart cat moment website because it will get very busy up until WrestleMania season and beyond. There's always great stuff on there, but check out the power rankings, my week to week contribution, but Stick around, check out all the other stuff that's going on, including the um, the March Madness video game tournament that's going on. Mm-hmm. Smart so. Madness has, uh, we're in round three, I think, right now, and mm. kind of plugging along. I, the next round is going to be up Friday morning. So uh, I think we're down to the semifinals is what's going to pop up next with the down to the final four. So vote while you can. 
Uh, and yeah, that's uh, it from me. Just keep check, clicking around, checking, enjoying all the stuff on there. All right, everybody, that's it for us in full for this episode of the pay per view point at the very least. More pay per view points coming up soon. We will Maybe see you. Event point. <laughs> Maybe we will have some kind of a thing like that. I don't know. Still thinking about the idea of somehow doing some kind of a live watch along with one of these pay per views. I don't think it's going to be standard and delivered, but maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, if it is, I'll let you know as much in advance as I can. But for now, plugging along the way that we normally do here. So, you know, we'll see you in the next one, everyone. Hopefully you have a great day. Hopefully you have a great week, whatever it is. And we will see you next time. But for now, this has been another smart out moment. And we're being counted out. 